What's going on everybody? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be installing this BC Racing coilover kit on this E36 M3 behind me. Uh, of course, we do offer a bunch of different coilover options, Bill Stein, Olin's, just to name a few outside of BC Racing. However, this is the kit that the owner of this car chose. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about how to install these coilovers on the E36. This would also apply to installing just normal shocks and struts on the E36 as well. So you could use this video for general suspension installation. It's going to be mostly the same. So with that said, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need for this job and we'll go ahead and get into it. So some of the tools we're going to need for the job, it's all standard metric stuff. So 18 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and 13 millimeter. Those are basically all of the sizes for the bolts, the mounting nuts, and also the sway bar link nuts on the front. However, in the case of these BC Racing coilovers, once we get to the installation, we will mention that some of those sizes do change. So instead of the nuts being 16 millimeters for the sway bar links, they'll be 17. And the nuts for the camber plates and rear shock mounts, instead of being 13, will be 12 because they're using a different standard hardware. So it's JS versus DIN, so those sizes change. But screwdriver is always helpful, flathead, a hammer, sometimes the bolt that holds the strut to the knuckle, the one that goes straight through at the top, that could be seized in there. So a hammer will be useful for that, but also if you have air power, an air hammer will also take care of that for you. Some pry bars, really long ratchet for breaking uh, stubborn bolts, quarter inch ratchet, 16 millimeter, 17 millimeter, 18 millimeter wrenches, and then your sockets, same thing, 12, 13, 16, 18 millimeter. Some of these are impact, some of these are just chrome. Two torque wrenches, using one that could do 100 newton meters, one that could do about 25 newton meters. Flashlight's always useful. The coilover kit comes with a five millimeter Allen key, and then obviously the spanner wrenches for adjusting the ride height, so you want those. Impact gun is also useful. Silicone spray for getting the brake hoses and the padware sensor and the ABS wheel speed sensor off of the bracket on the coilover. Other than that, like I said, it's all real basic hand tools. You don't really need anything crazy to do this job. Step one, we're gonna go ahead and take the wheels off. Well, actually step one is get the vehicle supported safely. In this case, obviously we're using the lift if you're at home on jack stands. Make sure the car's on level ground, make sure it's steady, especially don't put your body under the car if you're just using a uh, floor jack. So first thing we need to do is there's a couple of electrical uh, wires, so a wheel speed sensor. Uh, so we just need to remove the connector from the strut along with the brake hose. Silicone spray will help with this, but a screwdriver also works to pry that out. Also to aid in removal here, I'm actually gonna disconnect the wheel speed sensor from this electrical housing here and just leave it hanging off to the side because when we unbolt the strut, we do need to get this kind of out from behind. So it'll just be easier if it's not in the way. Not required to remove that, I just find it easier on this setup. And word of the wise, these usually collect a lot of debris. So if you have to be under the car and you're looking up at this thing, don't open it. Uh, make sure that your eyes are either protected or uh, you're just simply not opening this up with your eyes directly underneath. You will regret it. All right, next up we're gonna use a 16 millimeter box wrench for the counter hold and a 16 millimeter wrench to break the nut free uh, for the sway bar link. We're gonna spray some stuff on that. It's pretty dry, it's pretty crusty. You can use your favorite brand of rust penetrant for dry and crusty fasteners like this. It's just gonna make easier removal because the nut's not gonna bind on the corrosion. The coilover kit comes with its own sway bar links. They're shorter than the factory ones, so we're not gonna be reusing this. So I'm removing it with the strut. Uh, if you're working on an E36, uh, non-M later production, the sway bar will normally be attached to the control arm with a shorter link. Uh, the coilover kit that BC Racing offers is just gonna use the M3 style. There are early production E36s that use this as well, but for the most part, you're just gonna see E36 M3s with a sway bar link like this, and most normal E36s are gonna have the sway bar attached to the control arm. Next up, we need to remove the uh, three mounting bolts that hold the strut to the knuckle. So you have these two bolts down here. These are the short ones, 18 millimeter, and then you have a nut and a bolt at the top. 
also 18 millimeter. Could use a bigger impact gun, but also a really long ratchet will also do this for you as well. These are Loctited, so not 100% surprised that these were tough. But there's also nature's Loctite in this car since this was in Vermont most of its life. So you can see the red Loctite. You need to replace these bolts when you do this. Most people don't. I recommend always replacing these bolts on E36s. Ah. Now, whenever you're doing work on a car, there's always opportunity to find other things that need replacing. Just realize that this uh, brake hose is not in good condition. Um, that needs to be replaced ASAP. Uh, this car is not a daily driver, so it's not a uh, immediate safety concern. But uh, you know, when you're doing any kind of work on a car, always take a look around. You'll never know what you find. There's another bolt up here. These are both 18s. Um, the nut is spinning, so that's good. Hopefully the bolt is not seized in the knuckle. That does happen from time to time. But we got solutions to those problems too. Went ahead and put the nut back on the bolt. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap it with this hammer. Hopefully it backs out. I cheated and I used this big old air hammer. Um, but the other option for this is if you have a uh, map gas torch, you can actually heat up this area right here. You wanna be careful because obviously it is connected to the strut. Uh, the little bit of expansion will help you get that bolt to move. Once it starts to move, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, but uh, didn't really feel like playing with fire today when I could just use this, I don't know, jackhammer for bolts pretty much. Next up, I'm gonna take a pry bar and we're just going to wiggle the strut off the knuckle like so, it'll just drop down. This is why you wanna make sure that the brake hose is loose. Obviously this brake hose is destroyed anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but now that this is loose down here, we can go up top, remove the three nuts at the top and the whole strut is out. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this cover off that uh, goes on top of the three nuts that hold the strut mount on. This is an E36 M3 thing only. Normally E36s don't have this. These can be pretty tricky to come off, but uh, you know, I got this hand strength, so there we go, just pops right off. Next, uh, just three 13 millimeter nuts and that's it. Obviously on the last one, you wanna hold the strut, otherwise it will come crashing down. So in this application, the coilovers are directional for the front. This one's labeled FR for front right. The other one's labeled FL. The rears, it doesn't matter, but when you're installing coilovers, just make sure that uh, this is correctly installed uh, because if you reverse them, uh, particularly this sway bar mount tab is gonna be in the wrong location. So just do that beforehand. Um, also, you wanna orient the top mount in this place, which is a, a camera plate. You want to try to get it so that it's lined up with the holes on the top. And we're also going to be installing these BMW reinforcement plates. Um, this will take care of the issue of the strut towers being a little bit weak. It's just a little bit extra material and helps distribute the load a little bit better, especially with these solid mounts. They're going to transfer a lot more force back into the strut tower and like the rubber mounts, which have some cushion. Um, one thing to note on these, uh, you will need to make a little bit of a modification, notch this area out to get full camber adjustment. We're not going to do that uh, at this moment, but you know, if you do have camber plates like this, you will have to make that modification. So I went ahead and actually did a little bit of a camber adjustment. I just know from having installed these style coilovers before, you will need quite a bit of camber already preset. So made it negative, uh, moved the lock bolts around. But at this point, all we got to do is just sort of slide this up and in. Let's get a couple of nuts on the top as I drop that one. Because would it be a video or working on a car if you didn't drop a nut or a bolt? We'll go ahead and tighten these down once there's actually load on the suspension. But at this point, we're gonna go back underneath and bolt everything down to the bottom. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just raising up the control arm to the bottom of the strut. 
just using this uh, pull jack to do this. Obviously, if you were on the ground, you know, you could use a jack, uh, floor jack to do the same thing. But just trying to get this uh, lined up with the lower mount. So I went ahead and put a little bit of liquid molly uh, anti seize on this bolt, put the washer on, goes through here, and then we have another washer and nut that goes on the back side. Another uh, trick, especially on E36s, let's just say you maxed out your top camera plate adjustment. You could take a longer uh, mount bolt here and then use washers between the knuckle and the lower mount to get a little bit of extra camber. That's a, that's a little tip. You can install the two new lower bolts. Like I said, these come pre-applied with Loctite and they should be replaced. If you're doing the, the washers as camber shims, you want to make sure that you get a bolt that's longer than the original one here to compensate for the amount of washers that you're using. So the key to getting these three bolts in, you want to start at the top one. Uh, you'll notice actually on this lower mount that the top hole is not perfectly rounded. It's, it's actually more like uh, as if it was set up for eccentric. That is for adjustability uh, down here so you can get these lower bolt holes lined up. Once you have the bolts threaded or uh, first couple of threads are engaged, you can then go ahead and tighten everything down, torque it to spec. It does help if you use some kind of jack to sort of support the control arm. It would also help if you lengthen the shock body as well. Um, you're obviously going to have to make right head adjustments on this once it's installed, so it's not really a big deal. Um, but making the shock body longer, using a, a jack on the control arm to sort of support the weight of everything, it's going to help you get these bolts engaged. Torque spec on all three of these bolts is 107 newton meters. This will uh, move on to the rear. We're going to start off by removing the lower shock mount bolt. It's an 18 millimeter. That actually was pretty loose. That's nice. Make sure that you have the lower portion of the trailing arm supported. because so obviously the spring up here is pressing down and everything with the suspension unloaded. You don't want this thing shooting down. Just going to pull the bolt out like that. Nice and simple. And then we'll go ahead and lower the trailing arm with the bolts removed. Next up, grab a big pry bar and we're gonna go ahead and leverage the spring out. Since there's no preload on the spring at this point, good to go. So at this point, all you have is uh, two 13 millimeter nuts that hold the shock in place. Uh, worth noting that shock towers on E36s are extremely weak and they are known to fail. So uh, this entire panel here is actually separate from the body and you can order the replacement sheet metal for these cars. Um, so if you're doing a coilover installation or any kind of performance upgrade, definitely want to take a look at the rear shock tower. And if you need to replace that sheet metal, now's the time to do it. I can actually see just a little bit of narciness there, but um, for the sake of the installation, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and install so uh, yeah, actually this damage right here that we see, uh, that is very common issue on E36 chassis cars. It looks like uh, the previous owner to ever purchase this car did this fix with this random, I don't even know what material, I guess it's some kind of steel. So they did some kind of janky fix here. Uh, but uh, just so you know, you can buy replacement sheet metal for this. Uh, we actually sell those on the website. And as an E36 owner myself, who's trying to build a E36 track car, I could tell you that is a very heavy area of focus when you're trying to uh, build these cars. So let's talk about the rear spring setup. So obviously in the front, uh, it is a, it is a coil over uh, strut. So it's a coil over in the rear on E36s. It's a divorce setup. Now you can run a true rear coil over on an E36. However, you need to reinforce the hell out of the rear shock towers and make it load bearing. It's not load bearing traditionally. Uh, so you can't just run a, you know, standard coil over. Uh, basically the kit comes with a 62 millimeter ID, 140 millimeter long, 10 uh, K spring. That's the standard spring in the coil over kit. Spring rate in the rear is higher than the front because the spring is inboard. So obviously the upper control arm acts as a giant lever. Uh, however, you do have some ride height adjustment options for the rear. So what BC Racing has done is they give you two options. These are the two uh, locking rings 
for the rear height adjuster. This would normally go on the top facing downward. And so these two together uh, would be used to basically set a ride height and lock it in place. The other option is to use just one ring, which would be this one, max it out. The other option is to not use those at all. Use this poly shim, slide this shim all the way down the adjuster, and then you'd have to probably machine or cut some of this uh, ride height adjuster off to make sure that the control arm is not hitting this piece. Uh, so basically you can do three different types of ride height adjustment. If you use both of these, obviously you can adjust. If you just remove one, that's gonna be a lower setup. This would be the max lowest that you can go with the rear with this spring. Now for us, we're gonna be installing this with the intent of actually adjusting the ride height. So we're gonna use both of these rings. For an E36, I would normally just set these towards the middle and then go from there. You can always make it go a little bit lower, but the middle is always kind of a good place to start from. So just gonna make sure that the collar is somewhat near the middle. We're gonna take this little uh, spring insulator that just makes sure that it's not metal on metal because otherwise you might hear some noise from the rear. Uh, this actually sits on this little rubber pad at the top. I guess you could choose to remove this if you want, but honestly, I, I recommend using the rubber pad to kind of keep the noise in the rear down. This is a lower pad. Now would be a good time to replace it. Obviously this is not in fantastic shape. You're gonna take the lower spring seat that they provide, kind of hooks onto this little knob here. The spring goes on that. The adjuster goes on the top and basically it goes from top to bottom in the rear. So this is, you want the adjuster at the top, that way you can actually get to it. We're gonna take our little rubber shim that has this triangular point or cone point that's gonna be facing upward that goes on the upper control arm here. Our spring adapter goes on like that. We then take the coil spring. I like to make sure that the numbers are actually facing outward. So if you ever wanted to order a new spring or know the length of your spring, you can easily see it. And then we have our adjuster stack and shim that goes on top. Now, obviously this went in a lot easier than the other one came out. The spring is obviously shorter, um, but uh, this also is a much higher spring rate than the factory spring. So it is shorter, so it makes installation a little bit easier. And also note that the suspension still is a droop without the uh, shock being installed. So the uh, trick to installing shocks on any E36 or even E46 for that matter is to have a friend in the trunk of the car putting the nuts on as you slide the shock up through the shock mount. Otherwise, I don't, I mean, I guess you could try to do something like this, but you gotta have some long arms and very flexible, which I'm not, so. Uh, so now we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these shock mount nuts down. Obviously we put the reinforcement plate on that is a recommendation actually, even in general, even on a stock car, to use these shock tower reinforcement plates. It'll help prevent what happened to that shock tower. But like I said, E36s, not surprised to see that shock tower failure. So one thing to know about ride height adjustment on these BC Racing coilovers, or really any coilover of this particular style, uh, there's no helper spring in the rear. And the shock body has an adjustable mount on it. Uh, so hypothetically, let's just say uh, this right here is the correct adjustment for the spring and we're happy with this. The key is most people at this point would take the shock and bolt it to the trailing arm. They'd make the adjustment and be good to go. Well, the way that BC Racing wants you to do this is they want you to actually preload the spring. It is a fixed rate spring, so it doesn't matter that if it is under tension or not, the spring rate remains the same. So you want to try to compress uh, this spring roughly 10 millimeters. Uh, obviously I'm using a pole jack for this. So we'll compress the spring. That'll basically set it up so that when I adjust the height of the lower shock mount at full suspension droop, the spring won't rattle around or make any noises. That's critical because if you just leave it like this with some suspension droop and you bolt this up, every time the suspension unloads, you're gonna hear the spring in the, in the back rattle around. The whole point of preloading the spring and the same in the front, although that's a little bit different process, is to make sure the spring doesn't have a chance to move around or come loose from its mount. So we're gonna call that roughly 10 mil. You don't wanna compress it too much because then at that point you're obviously uh, affecting suspension travel. So as you can see, I can actually change the length of the shock 
And by changing the length of the shock absorber, that's going to allow us to properly preload the spring and get it to line up with the trailing arm bolt hole, which is a critical part of adjusting the ride height of the suspension. My trick on this is, um, is to not bolt the shock right away. It's to adjust the ride height via the spring because that's ultimately what dictates the ride height for the rear suspension. And then go ahead and bolt the shock once you preloaded the rear spring. And obviously they uh, max out how short these mounts can, or how long, how low these mounts can be uh, to fit everything in a smaller box. So there is quite a bit of adjustment, even in a divorce setup like this, so that you can get the preload of the rear suspension proper. So as I moved the pole jack out, you saw that the rear suspension didn't really drop that much. Like I said, that's because essentially by setting the preload of the spring and setting the length of the shock, that's how you're also adjusting uh, rear suspension droop. Uh, once you've done that, bring the uh, lower lock ring down and you want to jam it in place against this mount. You can also see how it's got this bevel cut. Uh, that's so it basically when you put it into the lower mount as a jam nut, it doesn't have the opportunity to move. Torque spec for our lower shock mount bolts is 100 newton meters. And you want to do, you want to make sure that you torque this uh, at right height because you don't want to preload the bushing in the lower shock mount. So the hardware included with the BC Racing uh, coilovers, it's probably a JS standard as opposed to DIN. So these are 12 millimeter nuts instead of 13. However, the torque spec is going to be the same. It's an M8 thread size. So I'm going uh, for 25 newton meters. So next up, we need to install the included sway bar link with the kit. Um, for reference, you cannot use a factory sway bar link for the setup. The tab is in a different location on the lower mount. So therefore the link has to be shorter. So you have to use the included sway bar links. So it's just a matter of getting everything lined up. They give you these washers, which I'm gonna use on the front where the stud goes through. And then they give you these uh, 17 millimeter nylock nuts. So it's a five millimeter counter hold. So the five millimeter Allen key they give you for the camber plates also works for these, which is convenient, just in case you don't happen to have a five millimeter Allen key or Allen socket. I don't think it's a coincidence that they made both a five millimeter size. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just loosely put the nut here at the top with the washer on the outside where the stud goes through. So we'll keep that in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this nut. Like I said, five millimeter counter hold. Here we go. Lower the car a little bit and get the uh, top nut at the strut mount. And unfortunately, because of how this tab is constructed, you can't use a ratcheting wrench on this. So you're gonna have to use the box end of a wrench and just tighten it into place. Fortunately, the night lock's not that tight. So I suppose if you wanted to, you could turn the Allen uh, counter hold. However, if you were to turn the counter hold and basically spin the stud of the ball joint while holding the nut, you do risk potentially ripping the ball joint boot. So I recommend doing it this way. The size is the same up front. So it's a 12 millimeter socket, 25 newton meters is the torque going for. Obviously the car is back down on the ground to do this which makes the most amount of sense because all the vehicle weight's gonna be on the strut mounts and the uh, shock mounts, so you actually be able to torque them properly. All right, so the one thing that we didn't really touch base in this video was how to properly adjust the ride height of coilovers. If that's a video that you'd be interested in seeing at some point, let us know. And we'd be happy to do a video dedicated specifically to that. But the big things to take away when you're adjusting the ride height on any coilover is to make sure that you're always measuring from a consistent point that you're recording the changes that you make and the effect that that has on ride height. So you have an existing log of the changes that you made and what the final results are gonna be. Another thing to mention is 
uh, over the course of a couple of weeks driving the car. The suspension will settle a little bit, so that ride height is going to change slightly, which is why it's really important to write down this information and have it, because if the suspension were to settle a little bit and lower a little bit more than you desire, and you want to bring it back up to the ride height you originally had when you made the original change, or when you were happy with the final setup, having that information is going to be really useful to get you back to that point. So keep in mind, this will probably be an ongoing process for the first couple of weeks of ownership once you install the coilovers. But once everything is settled down over, the, over those first couple of weeks, you get the proper alignment ready to go. You're not gonna have to make these changes really at any point again in the future. Of course, there's many ways to go about doing this. If you wanna do a corner balance, for example, that's gonna take a lot more expertise. You might need to take it to a shop. Obviously you need scales and things like that. The other thing is if you're just stri strictly looking for a proper ride height, the important thing is to make measurements have all the information recorded, and to be happy with the final results. So as you can see, it's really not that difficult a job to do coilover installation here in the Z36. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this information could be used for installing just normal struts and shocks, as well as springs. It's really not that difficult of a process. It's really not that many tools involved. It's pretty straightforward. Everything is pretty much right there in front of you. Uh, obviously, we found a lot of other things working on this specific car, but this is a project vehicle, so it is gonna be a little bit rough around the edges and those things are gonna be addressed over time. So for those of you that saw these issues and you're worried about that, don't worry about it, the car's not being driven. But anyway, I hope you learned something in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. We'll make sure we get back to you. Hit that like button so that we know you like these videos. Uh, we have plenty more DIY content on the way, so also hit the subscribe button. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thank you for watching.